Socceroos. Here's one for you. Who's your favourite Socceroo teammate that you've had? That I've had so yeah. in the past? Uh, well, could be, I mean... A bit could of, be a favourite for a number of reasons. Cor- like cor- cor- bloke, or, yeah, I mean, or that you just like having around camp because you get to take the piss out of him the whole time <laughs> or another reason. Um, yeah, tough. Tough question. I mean, like, for you example, don't upset anyone, one, do you? one of my best mates is obviously Bernie Abini, and he's come in for a camp. Okay. But he hasn't had many camps, you know. We used to share a caravan on the Central Coast yeah, with each other. With him as well. So. How's living in a caravan <laughs> with Bernie Abini like? Um, Cozy? Yeah, he's obviously a big boy. Uh, it can be annoying. He's got a, quite a, a deep snore, oh. which rattled the place, which. That's not good wasn't in a caravan. Great. No, me being a light sleeper, it wasn't good. Was it a caravan or a cabin? Uh, well, it was like a caravan cabins. with an with an annex attached to it. Okay. So not a caravan, obviously. It w- it wasn't mobile. You couldn't tow it away or nothing. <laughs> you went into like a bunk bed. Nah, nah. Yeah. It was yeah with an annex. So it was like sort of two big rooms and had a kitchen and all that in there. So it was like a miniature house really. At the end. A, gr- a granny flat basically. At the end of the day. Is your place in Brighton a bit nicer? Is along <laughs> those lines? <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's a little bit nicer okay. these days. Yeah. I'm on the third level this this time. So excellent. Moving a little bit higher each time, but uh, but no, it was what we needed at that time. Um, but yeah, to go back on the other question, I mean, Alex Wilkinson also, when I, I was rooming with him when I was in the Socceroos and we used to always have a good laugh and a good bit of banter as well. And, um, you know, the Socceroos has always been such a great environment. I don't know if I've had one favourable one. It's just at different times, you know, you joke around with others and, you know, have... A, uh, you it's know, just a good environment. Time. I'd probably say... I'd probably say Tom Rogic, you know, it's a it's a love-hate relationship, you know, a little bit. Yeah. We're either at the same time... Um, you know, we're at peace or it's it's either peace or at war. There's no in between <laughs> Why between is me there and war? him. <clears throat> um, just, I don't know, our personalities, you know. I think we <laughs> – he knows the right way to, I guess um, – yeah. Wind you up. Yeah, wind me up and I guess me with him, we've had <laughs> a few clashes. How do you wind Tom Rogic up? Because he looks so calm. <laughs> Um, steal his phone for a, a, long, a long amount of time. Okay. Uh, he didn't take too well to that. Or is he worried what's on it? And some uh, well, people might say I, it. I'm not. I'm not too sure. I, I think it's more the fact that he's made, you know, out to be, I guess, a, uh, you know, to be getting picked on, which he doesn't like. He likes to, okay. you know, and I think, be the popular one in the group and doesn't like to show weakness. So if you can pull on those strings, uh, you know, it can set him off. Uh, Can you tell him next time from us at Fox Sports <laughs> that when we come for a photo shoot at the, the team and we're just being friendly to, to come and do it with us because yeah. last time he blanked us? Yeah. No, I mean... Is he too good for us or something? Is well, he... I think it's something along those lines. Uh, a few trophies at, at, at Celtic now and I don't know, he thinks he doesn't need to do anything. He's on top of the world, you know, so... Well, he's definitely not going to do it next time after this yeah. one, I think, so... Yeah, he's, uh, Might as well have a shot at the stumps. Yeah. He, he doesn't... Um, yeah, he's, he's not a great listener, you know, so... <laughs> does what he wants. <laughs> As long as he scores goals for the Socceroos um, the also, next time around. Yeah, also, beat him in ping pong. That, that sets him off a bit as well. So. <laughs> you are one of the more competitive people going around, though. Like te- tennis, I've heard back in the day that you, like, if things weren't going well on a tennis, you're a very good tennis player. If things weren't going well, invariably the equipment could have bore the brunt of your frustration, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's not just tennis, but anything. PlayStation, um, yeah, ping pong, <laughs> anything. If I'm, if I'm not winning, it can be quite, you know frustrating but uh i'm i guess i've been lucky to be a little bit of a natural at anything i've tried so <laughs> i tend to if you do say yeah, so for yourself yeah, yeah well <laughs> results speak for themselves you know could so. you have could you have made it as a tennis player not made it made it but you know um i mean i was still very young and raw at that time i'm, I'm not i'm not sure to be honest uh i don't like to speculate or you know do hypotheticals or like that because you know i always feel like they're sort of different um, to what you sort of think you may do unless you go down that path. But uh, yeah, I was very raw and young at the time. But, um, you know, I, I you know I played against, you know, James Duckworth, who... The Duck. Yeah, yep. he, he obviously gets some qualifications into some Grand Slams and obviously plays around the world and that. And when I was younger, he used to beat me, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, was, I was 11 when I gave it up, so I think I was still too raw. But if I wasn't a footballer, I think I would have had another crack at a different sport. You you have played at Wimbledon, though, fortunately, because <laughs> from Club Bruges, uh, Kim Kleisters, her father, one of his best mates was involved with Club Bruges. Yep. You got to know Kim when you were over there in, in Belgium. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing you at Wimbledon one day. Mm-hmm. You got to trot out and have a hit on the courts. So, yeah, yeah. there. So I couldn't have yeah. been too bad. Well, it's close enough to sort of live in... 
I guess the other dream of being a professional tennis player, having to hit out there on the Wimbledon warm-up courts at the back, uh, was a nice feeling. It was, it was good to go out there and go toe to toe with her. Uh, she's obviously a big, you know, powerful hitter. Or it was back in the day, you know, when she was playing, and yeah, it was, it was nice to just go in there and get a few strokes. It was, it was nice once I sort of got the rhythm going. I was able to have a few rallies with her and, and whatnot. So you have to, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm sure you got Wimbledon coming up. The coverage you have to ask her of, of an outlet and analysis of how I went. So. Okay, yeah. I, I, I'll maybe talk about it off camera. Yeah. Rather than off camera. Uh, <laughs> I'm confident she'll back me. Talk about yeah. the real tennis fights out there. Um, so look at you go, huh? So look where goalkeeping's taken you. you. You put the gloves back on as a kid back there and now you can speak two languages, play it, uh, play tennis at Wimbledon, play around the world. It's turned out okay. And look after your mum, importantly, yeah. as well. you you got her sorted down when there. When she behaves, yeah. <laughs> when she doesn't ring you about yeah. transfer yeah. Exactly. rumors. Exactly, rumours and all that. Mum, how many times have I got to tell you? That must be unbelievably satisfying, though, to be able to kind of pay back that way in a big way. Yeah, uh, like herself and my family, you know, what, for what they've done. I mean, I've, I've told the story a couple of times now, but, yeah, I mean, try not to be obviously cliche and say I wouldn't be here without them, but the lengths that they obviously went to in... Mm to enable me to, to grow as a person and as a footballer and, you know, to develop the traits which we needed, as, you know, being both a person and a goalkeeper, having learnt, you know, in order to have to work hard, in order to, you know, I guess achieve things or, to, you know, to get things, nothing's handed to you. Uh, you know, how to respect, obviously, teammates and just other people, treat them how you would like to be treated, all those important um, lessons as a kid that you learn growing up and I had that in tenfold in, in the environment I had with my family and it's now nice, yeah, I guess to be able to capitalise a little bit from the industry of, of football, you know, being uh, financially rewarded in that way that I can, you know, do some nice things for them but, you know, aside from, you know, the finance aside from it, just, you know, spending time with them and just um, being in their company is, mm. is the, the best thing. I mean... You know, if I wasn't a footballer, then obviously, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, just being around them all the time would still keep me, you know, as happy um, as what I am now, so. Well said, Matthew. Well said. You're making the rest of us who have mothers and not calling them enough <laughs> shamed right now, unfortunately. Um, one last one about the, the program coming forward for the Socceroos. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, the amount of football that you're going to play potentially in the next three, four years. It's an endless cycle almost, so hence the time off now. But you've got your club football, you've got the new manager, bed down your spot there again at Brighton. You have to prove yourself a little bit again there. Mm -hmm. But soccer is World Cup qualifiers, Copper America as well. This time next year, you could be standing in front of Leo Messi, in front of 70,000 in Argentina, in Buenos Aires in Argentina going nuts. How's that prospect? How's that thought for you? Exciting! What I've been waiting for since the moment I walked off that pitch when they, you know, smacked us seven-one. Just not knowing when that next opportunity was going to come around, you know, to face the likes of him and, you know, all the other players and, and whatnot. And it's going to be a great experience and exposure for us as a national team going into, you know, a tournament like that with the the quality of opposition mm. uh, that we're going to be facing and the experience it's all going to give us is is going to be. You know, phenomenal, phenomenal for us and moving forward as a as a nation. You know, it's it's you know the, the more games we can get of that higher quality, mm. you know, the, common sense tells you that the better we're going to get, the better we're going to progress. You know, the more times you're exposed to that level of football, you know, the more you're going to learn about yourself in terms of the decisions you need to be making um, in those high pressure moments, in those fast paced moments, in order to you know, help you grow as a footballer to then be better in those moments moving forward. So I've got no doubt that tournament is going to be of massive importance for, for our growth as a as a nation, a footballing nation and a footballing team and footballing individuals. And, yeah, like I said, I, I'm looking forward to, to that challenge when it rolls around. I'll be doing everything I've, you know, that I possibly can to um, secure that starting position for the Socceroos, hopefully, to, to be out there and face uh, that challenge. So by the sounds of that, it's going to mean that you get no holiday next off-season. You're OK with that? Not a worry, mate, not a worry. You know, I was going to say that when you sort of started to mention that at the beginning, I got a little bit of a negative vibe to it, but man, I'm, I'm loving it. I love what I do. I love playing the game. Every opportunity I get to pull on the jersey, whether for Brighton or for Socceroos, um, I'm a footballer, I'm living my dream, so... 
you know, there's holidays, like I said, they, they can wait till when I retire. So when, as, as long as I'm fit and able to play, you know, both physically and mentally, I'm, I'm more than happy to go out there and just play game on game.